Good afternoon friends, I am Jemmy. I am currently working in Vikram Sara by Space Center and today I would like to talk to you about space and science. So when I say science, probably the first images that come to your mind would be of big fat textbooks of chemistry, physics, biology, uh, people with crazy hairstyles scribbling away equations on chalkboards, astronomers peering through telescopes, white lab coats and microscopes, beakers and test tubes full of bubbling and colorful liquids and so on. But these are just some facets of science. Science is much more than all the laws and theorems and problems that you do in class. It is an exciting journey to discover what we are, how things work and more importantly how they are likely to work tomorrow. It is a thrilling chance to answer the questions how, what and why. So, shall I ask you some of these questions that we all want to know the answers of? Well, we all know, I hope, that stars are huge, hot balls of gas which are far, far away. But how can a ball of gas give out so much heat and light? Also, what keeps these stars in their places? Again, what exactly is life? How did it all begin? And if plants are living too, then can they feel pain? Does it hurt? Another interesting question would be, what exactly do you mean by sleep? And what are dreams? If a blind person who cannot see anything, what can he dream of? Will he see pictures or is it just sound? Do animals see colors the same way as we do? Also, why are human beings so much more difficult and complicated to understand? Even today, scientists are trying so hard to imitate a body function in the human beings. Everything is tied up together so, so complicated. In the number order to number of vehicle adachir in the office, school loan the poadrikiana. ജീവനില്ലാസിംഗ്ലി <laughs> A tiny non-living being has caused so much problems for us. Wouldn't it be exciting to finally have a vaccine for it? A proper medicine for it? And if you want to do anything like that, do you want to do anything like that? I want all of you to talk to your grandparents. They will tell you how different life was 50 years back. Today our scientists are talking very excitedly about gravitational waves, um, string theory, dark matter, dark energy and so on. Maybe a 50 year ahead of now, our whole understanding of the life and the world itself might change. Science deals with everything, living and non-living, visible and invisible, from the tiniest microorganisms, viruses and atoms, to the huge stars and galaxies. I am going to go to a nursery rhyme in all of us. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. For years, everyone has been staring up at the sky and wondering what lies beyond. And now, We understand that Earth is just one of the planets which go around the Sun. And our Sun is just one of the billions of stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Moreover, we also know that we have a moon which goes around the Earth. So, where does this all begin? Where does space begin? How, how high above Earth do I have to go to say that I am in space? So if I get into an aeroplane and go up, am I in space? The answer would be no, because I would have to go up 100 kilometers into space, uh, to reach space. That is where the Karman line is, which we call as the demarcation for space. So 
now to get there i would definitely need rockets because i would need a device which does not depend upon air but can apply acceleration to itself by pushing out some part of its mass with high speed i hope at least some of my older friends would have uh, studied conservation of momentum and newton's third law in class i was also once a student like all of you sitting in my class learning all of these theorems and now when i started working i actually got the chance to go and see a rocket launch live it was an amazing experience because this gigantic rocket which was sitting on the launch pad there it just fired up with a huge majestic roar it lifted off from the ground and soared up into the sky i had goosebumps it was such an amazing feeling so now i know how to go into space and go beyond earth so now what is next the moon of course as i already told you the moon is just a piece of rock which goes round and round the earth similarly we can have any artificial device which we make orbit the earth and thus we have our artificial satellites try to think of it like a huge maybe a camera which is going round the earth i'll show you a image this particular image is of your school vivekananda public school and that right there you what you see is your grounds and your school building this is an image which a satellite up in the space will see similarly these satellites are helpful for us in communication navigation all of us have used gps google maps and all that and it also helps us in weather monitoring disaster warning and so on now india and so many other countries have reached the moon but is that enough shouldn't we go beyond and now going beyond we have the mars mars is the nearest planet to earth and usa russia european space agency and our very own india has already successfully reached mars but now the whole world has been very excited about building cities in the mars under the leadership of elon musk and spacex yes friends we are in the space era where everyone wants cheaper and reusable access to space human space flight and even space tourism yes one of these days we might actually be able to book a ticket go to moon see everything and come back this might even be the case with mars so moon and mars are just the stepping stones to what lies beyond have you heard about the voyager program by nasa Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 both of them have actually left the solar system and are now going beyond what lies beyond we have billions of stars in our milky way galaxy which lies beyond it and similarly there are billions of galaxies which lie beyond it just like our milky way so there is no limit to how much we can go and we still don't know what lies beyond So I'll give you a fact based on Kepler space missions data there could be 40 billion planets which are like earth in our very own milky way galaxy when i say that i mean 40 billion planets which are located in the habitable zone earth le pole thanne jeevan undavan chance ulla jeevane support cheyan pattuna adathu nakshatrathinte zone il ulla 40 billion planets aanu milky way matra ulle so couldn't it be possible that in at least a few of those planets out there life exists in the way we know it today so are we really alone in this world i don't think so before concluding i would like to give you an assignment or a task uh, don't worry this is nothing serious just a fun task for you to think through Now I already told you that we have space tourism coming up and that we will be building cities in Mars. So if you get the chance to be one of the people to go into Mars for the first time and settle down there like a Martian, then how will you survive? We all know that there is no water, there is no air to breathe, there is no food in Mars. 
so which means from whatever that is available on mars you have to make your own wa- air water food and whatever else you need so how will you do it i want you to think it through and bring up a plan so that we can all see how far ahead we can go i would like to take this opportunity to thank rashmi ji nayar principal vivekananda public school for giving me this such a wonderful opportunity to talk to you today and i would like to conclude by wishing you all the very best for all your activities in science and space club may this give you a wonderful opportunity to build that interest and spark in you towards innovations and and that scientific temper so that you can keep on answering the questions how what and why thank you